Now I'm going to switch it up on you a little bit. We're bending a stem over here for our dory. Now there's our little setup behind us and there's no stem as you can see. This is the stem right here and uh, I've cut it out of a really nice piece of seasoned white oak. Uh, it's uh, edge grain. It's got the vertical annual rings going through it this way across the boat and the medullary rays are in this direction here. And you can see that I've got it crowded into this little steel plate here. Now I've taken and gone up to a a little metal fab place and had this plate bent. It's just a piece of three and a half inch by quarter inch steel and I had them put two right angles in it and punch a few holes in the end of it here. And uh, I waited until I got the steel plate cut before I cut the piece of wood to length. So I cut the piece of wood and crowded it right in there as tight as I could get it really. And I drilled a little hole in the end of the steel plate here on both ends and put a nail in it. And that's why you can see it's just holding itself right in position right here. I don't have to keep losing control of it or anything like that. It makes it real easy to do. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compression bend this thing. We're going to add steam obviously in a plastic bag. And uh, once we've got it hot, we're going to take a come along, which I have right here, and we're going to hook it in this hole and in the hole on the other end right through the plastic of the bag. And we're going to put a little outrigger in it like this and put the wires around the end of the outrigger. And we're going to tension up the come along and that's going to do the bending. And it's compression bending because it's pulling the two plates together like this. The piece of wood is not allowed to stretch on the outboard side right here up against the steel. It's totally under compression when you bend it and that's how you control the amount of recall that you get. You know, if, uh, if you allow it to stretch, it'll have quite a bit of recall. If you don't allow it to stretch, it won't have very much at all. So uh, we're going to actually bend it kind of approximately the uh, shape that we want it to be and then check it afterwards. I don't have brackets on the table or anything like that to clamp it up against I may add some brackets as I go, but right now we're just going to use the come along to bend it. And it's going to be pretty easy to do. The next thing that we have to do is we have to pull a plastic bag over it. And uh, we're going to pull a 12 inch plastic bag right over it. And I'm making right now over on the saw horses here or on the table saw a another plastic bag to go over that one. That one's 12 inches and I'm making an 18 inch one to slip over that. So it'll be double bagged and insulated which are really going to make it hot. We've got two steam sources here. We've got a couple of turkey uh, cookers here and with gas cans on top, five gallon gas cans. And we've got this black rubber hose here. This is actually steam hose. This is very good and expensive hose. And uh, no fittings or anything. We just cut a hole in the top of the can and put the hose in there. And uh, you can see we've got gas here. So we've got quite a bit of heat. These cookers that I've got have been upgraded to a much larger size burner under there. So this thing has really got some heat now. And that's the secret to this is to have heat and lots of it. You know, we've tried to do these things before without the strap and it just plain doesn't work. You know, when you're trying to get something as tightly bent as this, it doesn't work. You have to compression bend a piece like this. And of course, that's very different than a lot of steaming that you are twisting a piece or edge set in a piece of lumber for a plank or whatever else. This is a, you know, isolated situation here. It's compression bending. I can't wait to do it myself, so let's get started. This is the material that we're using for the plastic bags. Now, this particular section of it right here was a 12 inch bag. And what I did was I cut it right down the seam and I'm adding a 12 inch piece to it. So I'm going to end up with a bag about 16 inches across. And uh, the idea is that I'll slip it over another 12 inch bag and it'll be like double insulated. So I've already uh, put one seam together right here and it worked out fine. So what we're going to do is show you exactly how I do it now. I've got it hanging over the edge of a table saw here just like that. And I'm going to put a little piece of wood on top of it just to weight it down and a piece of lead just to tame it like that right there. Now I'm using a little propane torch here to heat the plastic and I'm heating it from underneath on the table saw side and from the top too. I'm just waving it back and forth. I don't get it too close but you kind of move it in until you see the plastic start to melt a little bit and then move your way along. And you just got to be careful that you don't get your fingers involved with it while it's too hot. You know, you let it cool just for just a few seconds and then you can put your fingers on it and kind of roll it up a little bit. Kind of like doing a pie crust. 
the edges of the pieces are lined up with each other and they're not hanging out past the saw very far, maybe just like three quarters of an inch or so. You know, so, uh, you know, it won't melt it down past that. And that's exactly what you want. You don't want to get carried away here. If it catches fire, it'll kind of go out when it reaches the table saw. Or you can just bang it out with your fingers and just keep right on going. But uh, with gloves on, you'd have a hard time with it because you wouldn't know what temperature it was. You couldn't feel it. So what would happen would be it would keep sticking to your gloves and everything else. So it's kind of funny, but I'm doing it barehanded here, obviously. And uh, this is the way it works best for me. So here's the bag that I just made, and it came out pretty nice. This is the material that I made it from. This is the 12-inch bag that comes on a roll, just like that. So this is pretty convenient. We're going to put a piece of this inside a piece of this, so we'll have it double bag. But uh, I'd just like to say some more about this stuff right here. You can use this stuff for all kinds of stuff. It was just sold, actually, to store things in. But it's 6 mil poly is what it is. It's just 6 mil poly. So you can make bags out of 6 mil poly all you want, any shape you want to house anything, steam any kind of tree, crook, anything you want, and uh, it works fantastic. We used it to bag up huge planks on plank and schooners and different things like that, and it just works fantastic. It doesn't melt no matter how hot the steam gets. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a piece of it up like this. This is the same as that. I'm going to put it around the end of a stick right here and uh, just fold it over the stick like that put a spring clamp on it like that and feed it right up inside this bag like this and in it goes just like that now we're ready to slip the bag over it and I folded the nail over here that holds the piece of wood in place because when you're slipping the bag on, you could poke a hole in the bag with it. Now, I wouldn't want to rip it up or hold it up, so I just fold that over out of the way. And I've also checked these corners and everything with a file here because I ground all the corners round and filed it so that wouldn't hang up on the plastic and it should slide right in there real easy. So here we go. We're just going to take make sure that center bag gets over the end like that. Now I'm going to lift it up, put it up on the table, and I'm going to slide it into the bag, then slide the bag down, slide it up. There's no particular technique that you have to use here, just anything that works for you. But you want to slide it on there without ripping it, and it's pretty easy to do. So once you get it on there, I'm blocking the thing up off the table a little bit because when I install the hoses, I want the hoses to lay right down on the table at the bottom because we want the bag to manifold the steam underneath the piece that we're trying to bend. Now the last thing we have to do is tape the bag around the hose. Now you'll notice I'm not taping the hose right to the bag because I want the hose to be able to slide in and out and twist in case I want to reposition my steam generator or the piece on the table. I'm going to show you real quick how I check the water level in one of these cans now. There's probably other ways, but this is the way I do it. I've got a tube down in the water here, and I've got a little rubber hose on the end of it. I'm going to blow air in it, and it's going to sound like bubbles. Now I'm going to lift it up until all of a sudden the bubble sound goes away, and that'll be the water level. Right about there. Now that's the water level right there, right about like that. That's the best way I know how to do it. It's the easiest and the fastest way to do it, right there. We've got our two upgraded cookers here with the larger burners in there, and we've got our two cans with the real broad bottoms that subjects a lot of surface area to the heat. So the combination is just right. We've got the right amount of heat, which is quite a bit, and we've got just about the right amount of water in those cans, about half full, and it's not going to take any time at all before they start boiling. Now, the other thing that is important is to plug the hole where you pour the water in if you want it to really work out well, because what will happen is you've got thermal circulation here, and if you allow it to, cool air will go into that hole and up the hose with no cap on it. 
All right, you've seen our whole setup here. We're going to start steaming right away. We've actually got steam coming right now. It's within less than five minutes, actually, since we lit the burners. And uh, we're boiling about two and a half gallons of water at a time. We've got our piece of wood that we're going to bend inside the bag. And now uh, we've got our steel strap around in it. And I've shown you the holes in the end where we're going to hook the come along. The come along is going to do the pulling. So what I'm going to do right now is just hook the come along right on. So I'm going to undo it from here. Bring it right up and just po poke a hole right in the plastic bag for the come along to hook onto that steel. Now I'm going to put my cable right up on top here, pick the come along up on this end, and I'm going to hook it right on to there, like that. Now I'm going to put a little outrigger in here like so and run the cables around the end of the outrigger and we're ready to tighten up the come along. So. Here we go. We've got two to one on the come along because I've got a pulley on the other end. So I've got quite a bit of power here. And I'm tensioning up the cable right now. And there it is, right there. Now, we're just going to put a little tension on it right now. And I don't expect the whole thing to bend right away. But we're just going to put a good tension on it and let it sit there. And uh, you see the cables being nice and tight. Well, when those cables start to slack up, it starts to bend. So maybe 45 minutes or so, or maybe even a little bit less, and it'll start to bend. We'll just put a little bit more tension on the come along. All right, we're steaming right now, and I've got the two bags on here. Now, I've cut a couple of holes in the inner bag, one near this end and one near that end, and I was hoping that the steam would get between the two bags and kind of come out over here. So what I have to do is cut a release hole here, because really, if you don't have an exit hole, you don't really get steam in. It requires, like, thermal uh, circulation. So I'm just going to cut another little release hole right here, like so. You gotta be careful, that's hot, that's steam. So be careful. And then I was been wondering whether or not I could actually patch a hole in the bag while it's steaming. Now this is right on the edge of the seam here, but I bet you that you can just like that. Now you've got the two bags inflated, one inside the other, and the second bag is acting like an insulation. You know, there's an insulation between the two. You've got steam between the two bags, as well as in the inner bag. And of course, that's where our piece of wood is, in the inner bag. So we've just made it so that we don't lose much heat. So you're getting a maximum amount of heat here. You know, it's got a lot of steam coming quickly and easily. And uh, it's going to be very hot in there. It's going to be effective quite quickly. You'll be surprised. Now, when these cables start to loosen up, I'll know that the wood is starting to bend, and I'll be able to tighten up the come along quite a bit more. <sighs> Fantastic. So what's going on in the bag here is we're using the steam to create the heat that we need to melt the lignin, which is the glue that holds the wood fibers together. So we're just letting the steam do its work, but the idea here is to melt the lignin in the wood. That's what we're trying to do. And I can hold it down, you can see the wood. We're using heat to do it, and the steam is just carrying the heat. So uh, if you could use dry heat, I guess you could do it easily, but uh, you know, I don't know how to create the dry heat. This seems to be the easiest way to create the heat that's needed to do a job like this. I'm starting to collect a little bit of water in the bottom of it, and I'm going to have to poke a drain hole in it pretty soon, drain some of the water out. But all the connections are right, it's working great. All the steam's getting where we want it to get. So fantastic. I'm going to check the water in this can over here. Now one thing you want to remember here is to keep constant attention on that water level. If you have a little bit too much water in there, that's not going to hurt anything. It might boil a little slow, but if you let that water level get way down low and almost run out, it'll start to burn. And uh, that just isn't going to work for you at all. Then when you dump water in it, you have this clash of the cold water with the hot bottom of the tank and all this other stuff. Doesn't work. You keep water in the tank and you keep your eyes on the flames. Man. Awesome.
Okay, we've got the bag inflated again. We're putting out a maximum amount of steam. I'm checking the cables here. They've already loosened up a little tiny bit, and I'm going to crank it up a little bit more here. That's two clicks. Two more clicks. And it's starting to bend very easily. Look at that. Nice curve in it. So, we'll just wait a few more minutes, and I'll give it a few more clicks. Cables are a little loose. I'm going to give it a couple more cranks. Again, we're compression bending here. Now, you don't do this in all situations. A lot of situations you just bag and steam like framing or twisting planking or edge setting planking or things like that. And that'll do it for right now. But basically right here, we're compression bending this because it's a severe curve in uh, dimension. We're bending it against its dimensions here. So uh, it's pretty tricky to do this without compression bending it. It wouldn't be successful at all. Now you can clearly see that the uh, steel is in a curve. So it's starting to bend quite a bit. And I'm going to have to do something about checking that curvature a little bit later. But uh, for right now, we're still pulling it into that curvature and softening it up. Now it's really cranking out some heat right now. The bag is really inflated like crazy. And uh, you know, it's got a pressure in it, see? You know, I can push down on the bag and it inflates itself right back up again. So it's really producing a lot of steam and it's softening that piece of wood up really well. And next thing for me to do is just kind of check the curvature with some sort of a straight edge against the steel on this side. I'm just approximating this curvature because I've got a little bit of extra wood and I can trim it a little bit. So which is going to go quite a bit more yet, though. Now you can see how hot it is. It's producing steam like crazy. This is our exhaust hole right here. You have to have that hole, otherwise the steam couldn't get in. You have to have a way to let it out. So, you know, that bag is maximally hot right now and it's doing the trick. So, it's ready to crank up a little bit more. Nice. It's actually a pressure cooker here, to a certain extent. Watch that bag deflate. As soon as I pull that plug out of that can, I get a little less pressure and the bag deflates. You know, now when I pour some water in it, it'll get a little cooler and it'll deflate a little bit more. But It'll just reinflate as soon as all this water starts to boil again. And it won't take but a minute or less, really. I'm going to put a couple more gallons in there. As we keep cranking the come along up tighter here, it's compressing all the cells in that wood, all the way from the strap, all the way across to the inside of the curve. It hasn't allowed any of the cells to stretch. It's totally under compression, and that's what it takes in order to keep that curvature once it cools off. Now it's taking shorter and shorter time for the cable to get loose, so I can crank it up a few more cranks, and uh, pretty shortly here, the cable's going to be perfectly straight, and I'll be able to knock the outrigger right out of there. So I'm just going to wait just a little bit more, and probably on the next crank, and I'll be able to knock that right out. Nice. Now you can really see the curve in it now. I'm going to give it a couple more cranks, because I can feel the cable loose again. And uh, then I'm going to remove the outrigger, or the strut there. So, a couple, like so. The cable's almost straight now, and the strut's hardly doing a thing. So I'm just going to take a hammer and knock the strut right out of there. Like so. And now that bag will inflate a little bit differently, just like that. Yeah. Now I'm going to give it a couple more cranks. Yeah, let's let that sit for a little while. Now I'll be able to check the shape 
Now, it doesn't have to be exactly the right curvature that's drawn on the drawing board because I'm going to have to overbend it a little bit beyond that. I don't have any chart or anything to tell me how much to do that. It's kind of a guesstimation here is what it is. I'm going to overbend it, and uh, once it cools down, it will spring back a tiny bit, but uh, I think it'll end up just about right. Yeah, let do a little thinking here. A little bit, if I'm just going to leave it alone just like that. How else could I do it? Yeah. So now I just put a few brackets down on the table here and I'm tightening them down with a, some short lags here. Now they don't have to be incredibly fastened down too tight, but I want to use a few of them and influence the shape just a little bit more between the brackets. I'm going to put a, pull a little curvature into this section and pull a little curvature into this section just with a clamp. So let me finish this one up. I'll clamp two more down. I'll lag two more down. And then I'll be able to clamp it. Yeah. Now, like I said, I lagged a few of these brackets down to the table, and I've got a space in between here, right here, so I can clamp this up to the bracket with a clamp. I mean, I've got all the time in the world to work with it now. If I wanted to work with it all afternoon, I could, but all I really have to do is do a little bit more of influencing of the shape right here, and then uh, we'll be in. Look how easy that thing moves. Just as easy as can be. I've got to clamp it on the other end. Anytime you're steaming something on a table like this, it's always handy to have these brackets around because you can lag them down any way you want. And uh, the cable's not sensitive to what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to pull this thing into a parabolic curve, sort of, instead of an estimated radius. I want an estimated parabolic curve. So this works out really well. I put the brackets down. It's really soft. It clamps right up to the brackets really easy. And uh, there you go. I think that's a parabolic curve right there. It's a little more curved at one end than it is at the other. See that? It's off. You know? Now it's fully bent, and I mean it's bent a lot, maybe a little bit over bent and that's fine because it might have a tiniest little bit of recall, but it's done and we're going to let it steam for maybe 45 more minutes, we'll just take a little break and then I'll pull the steamers off of it and cut the bag off, but I'm going to keep it clamped to the brackets and keep the uh, come along on it so it stays nice and bent until the whole piece of wood cools down. Once that happens, I'll be able to remove the steel plate from the side of it and uh, We'll be done. All we'll have to do then is take and fit it to the boat.